we're going to go over three different types of mineral rights, even though there are really six types to go over. For the purpose of this class, you really only need to know about mineral interest, royalty interest, and working interest. The other types are non-participating royalty interest, overriding royalty interest, and non-operated working interest. Let's start with mineral interest. Mineral interest is what you think of when you think about owning the mineral rights under a tract of land. You own the executive rights. Executive rights is the right to enter into an oil and gas lease, to receive lease bonus, a delay rental, and royalty payments. People have different strategies when they sign a lease. The oil and gas company also has an agenda when they give you an oil and gas lease. So sometimes if you think that they're not really gonna find anything or not find much, you may negotiate for a higher lease bonus upfront with a lower royalty rate. On the other hand, some people will negotiate for a higher royalty rate over the long term, they'll get more money and they really don't care that much about what the lease bonus is. When you sign an oil and gas lease, you're basically exchanging your mineral interest and the executive rights to explore, develop, and produce the minerals under that land. And you're giving that basically to the company that will be drilling a well, presumably. And in exchange, you're reserving a royalty. Now, you're not having to pay anything to have this well drilled, and they're very expensive, especially the long horizontal fracked wells uh, that are in the shale place. Those are really, really expensive wells, and you don't have to pay for any of that. You don't have to pay to operate it. You don't have to pay any of the expenses. The company that will be drilling the well is taking on a huge amount of the risks and of the expenses. So they're taking usually 75 to 87 and a half percent of the minerals or the revenue that would be generated from selling the oil and gas and other minerals. And you get to reserve a royalty. It depends where you are in the country because in some areas like in Texas, you hardly ever see leases, at least modern ones, that are less than 25 percent. And in other areas, you hardly ever see anything that's above 12 and percent. And there's also a mix in, anywhere in between. So there's a whole variety of leases out there. And it's really important that you hire an attorney to negotiate these leases. Because as we mentioned earlier, that if you reserve 12 and percent, but your neighbor reserved 25%, they're getting double the royalties for the life of that well. So it's really a good investment to hire an attorney, but a lot of mineral owners don't do that. You can have multiple leases on one property. Just each mineral owner can have multiple leases. You can lease above 5,000 feet to one operator, and you can lease below 5,000 feet to another operator or however you wanna divide it up. You can also sell the well bore interest of only one well that you have an interest in instead of all of the royalty interests that you have. So it becomes more complicated than it first seems. So wells may produce for a long time. They may not, they may be a dry hole. They may produce for just a few months. There's a whole spectrum of how successful a well is. But when it stops producing at economic quantities, then the lease is released and the mineral interest goes back to the mineral owner and the royalty interest just completely goes away. So if what you bought was only royalty interest and you bought it from somebody who did not own the mineral interest, then your ownership completely goes away. When the lease is released, the mineral owner has the ability to release those minerals if another company is interested in exploring and producing a well on that property. Let's revisit working interest. When a mineral owner signs an oil and gas lease, they're reserving a royalty and getting a royalty interest. And the working interest owner is the one who is going to be drilling the well. So because they're taking on a huge amount of risk and all of the operational and drilling expenses, they receive a majority of the interest in that well. It's usually 75 to 87 and a half percent. 
but of course it could be more complicated than that. And there are actually two types of working interest. You have operated working interest and non-operated working interest. The non-operated working interest owners do not have any say in the operating of the well. But all working interest owners have to pay those expenses related to drilling and operating the well. So I very often hear that non-operated working interest owners are kind of stuck with a lot more expenses than they think should be fair. And they also don't have any say in what happens. So just be really careful with working interest. I personally do not buy it ever. I feel like it's just extremely risky. And at any point, you could be asked to fork up a whole bunch of money to drill more wells. Working interest does come with some benefits though. The high risk can result in high reward, but it also comes with um, tax deductions. You can deduct a huge amount of the losses. And so for some people who are looking for a way to offset other income, it works really nicely for them. But I would say it's something that you really have to have very deep pockets and a very high risk tolerance to do working interest. I do not personally buy any working interest at all. I have heard so many stories from people I know that have lost a lot of money in working interest. However, if you're interested in this, you might wanna check out energy funders. I have nothing to do with the company. I've never invested with them, but I know that they do sort of a crowdsourcing platform. But otherwise, I would totally stay away from working interest. Stick with royalty interest or ideally mineral interest, royalty interest together.